Prime Minister Narendra Modi is poised to make a historic trip to Canada, the first trip by the Indian Prime Minister in over four decades. There will be a cluster of issues on the table, including business, civil, nuclear energy, and uh, a host of other issues. Uh, we have with us Canada's High Commissioner to India, His Excellency Nadir Patel, to talk to us about the upcoming trip of Prime Minister Modi, the issues on the table, and possible outcomes we may expect from this visit. Excellency, welcome. This is the first Prime Ministerial visit, bilateral visit, by the Indian Prime Minister in over four decades. How is Canada looking at this visit? What are your broad expectations? Well, Canada is uh, extremely excited about uh, hosting uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, during these, uh, these dates uh, next week. I think it's a tremendous opportunity to further advance and build on the strong Canada-India relationship. Uh, in terms of uh, the Canadian expectations are high. They're either high of the relationship, they're high of the, uh, the Modi government in terms of the number of initiatives that are underway now. And we look forward to this visit being a very, very uh, productive and fruitful one. When will we'll set the stage for the relationship well into the future? What are the key areas, you know, from India's point of view, India is looking to finally go ahead with the commercial agreement on the supply of uranium, taking forward the nuclear deal we signed a few years ago. What is the latest in that? Well, the nuclear cooperation agreement, uh, which was signed not too long ago, as well as the administrative arrangements which followed, were very, were very important agreements because they set the stage for a number of commercial possibilities. In terms of uh, where things are at, there are a number of commercial discussions taking place, whether it's related to uh, uranium, uh, whether it's related to the rest of the nuclear ecosystem, including areas like waste management, training, capacity building, uh, safety. We have a lot to offer from Canada's perspective and working with the opportunities here in India, I think this could be an opportunity to see some fruits of those results. Uh, discussions are ongoing from a commercial perspective and we're hopeful that they'll yield that results in the very near future. I think since we have a robust India-Canada, have a robust uh, business economic relationship and there is talk about finally we've been negotiating SEPA for a long time, that uh, during this visit finally you could have a movement forward of possibly the deal. I think SIPA is a very good example of something that could help uh, spur greater two-way trade and investment numbers, uh, create jobs both in India and in Canada. And we're very hopeful that we'll uh, see the results of those discussions continue to yield some advancements and success. Our negotiators did meet for a ninth round uh, a couple of weeks ago and discussions are ongoing and we're certainly hopeful that will yield some positive outcomes. We're also focused very much on the Foreign Investment Protection Agreement, which we have been uh, trying to finalize for some time as well. And this is also very, very important in the context of bringing greater stability, predictability and protection for investors uh, both in Canada and in India. And uh, this could also help stimulate further investment numbers both ways. And uh, when you start looking at the uh, Modi government's vision around making India, revitalizing the manufacturing sector, an economic partnership agreement would help provide lower cost inputs into that uh, sector, provide greater opportunities for exports going out of the Indian market. Uh, the foreign investment protection agreement would help spur greater investment into the manufacturing sector here, into infrastructure. There's interest on the part of pension funds from Canada investing here as well. So these agreements, I think, are very, very critical in that they have the opportunity and the potential to further advance our trade and investment numbers, at the same time, feed directly into the Modi government's vision around large-scale infrastructure investment, around manufacturing, all the things that we fully support because we have a lot to offer from Canada's perspective. Talking of trade and investment, currently bilateral trade is a little over $6 billion. Are you looking to set a new target? And on investments front, Indian investments in Canada for, uh, exceed those of Canadian investments in India, right? Mm -hmm. uh, are we going to see more of Canadian investments? Are we looking at some figures, targets? I think the trade numbers uh, were, you know, just around six and a half billion dollars a year in trade. I think that number has the potential to grow quite a bit higher. There's no doubt about that. And agreements such as these would help stimulate some of that. Setting targets is not something that I'm going to do. We will focus on continued growth, and those gr those numbers have grown in the last few years, but I think they can grow a lot quicker well into the future. In terms of investment, definitely there's scope for more Canadian investment here into India, and there's interest in more investment coming into India. Uh, and we do have large-scale investors already 
having made recent commitments of uh, significant amounts of money, Fairfax India launched a $1 billion investment fund just for India. Uh, Canada Pension Plan is committed here well over a billion dollars, and, and there are many others like that. Uh, but the Foreign Investment Protection Agreement will be a stimulus to help increase those numbers. And I think that's part of what we hear from investors is um, we have the interest, you have the opportunities, you want this investment to come in, you want those numbers to be a little bit more balanced. Let's get the FIPA done and concluded, and then that'll open up some of those opportunities. Can you identify three or four areas where Canadian companies are especially interested in putting the money in India? I think it's a, there's a quite a significant breadth. Um, infrastructure we just talked about. I think there's a, a lot of interest in infrastructure that feeds not only into, you know, bridges and highways and things like that, but it also feeds right into the smart cities campaign as well. So for example, uh, airports, uh, urban planning, urban design, uh, train stations, public private partnerships, hospitals, uh, even large scale multiple residential housing uh, complexes, a real mix of those to feed into that uh, network. Um, but then it gets into various industries as well. You know, we have 600 Canadian companies that are doing business in India right now, with 300 of them having some form of a physical presence. And you have companies like Bombardier, like McCain, who have invested in facilities and factories and plants. But like them, there are a number of other Canadian companies that are actively pursuing uh, investment opportunities in a range of sectors from new uh, clean energy to traditional uh, businesses to agri-food, agri-processing, uh, just to name a few. Canada is an agriculture giant, you know, for huge land, fertile land, technology and the rest. And you just briefly mentioned, you hinted about uh, investments in agriculture. Can you amplify a little? This is potentially a very big area where we are already doing few things but have, have scope for much, much more. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we, we have a lot to offer in terms of agri-food products, but also uh, technical capacity, science and technology around farming processes, agricultural processes, also fertilizers, potash. So the full ecosystem of food, agri-food and food security, we have a lot that we, we can offer. We are already exporting from Canada significant amounts of pulses as an example into the market here. I think uh, about 35% of all lentils and peas imported into India actually come from Canada, which many people don't necessarily know about. Um, and we'd like to see more of that, but we also want to see that diversify a little bit more. And when you start looking at products, you can talk about seafood, you can talk about non-pulses, but other types of products. When you talk about cold storage systems, food processing systems, again, science technology-wise, we have a lot of uh, capacity where we can uh, leverage higher crops and help work with Indian uh, farmers here as well to sort of bolster their own uh, efforts here. And then, as I mentioned, in some of the uh, the fertilizers and uh, potash, as an example, there's a lot more that we can do as well. So these are areas that I think will feature very prominently, not only now, but well into the future. What about mining? Um, mining is an area that, again, potash is a good example, um, you know, uh, through, through Canada's uh, mining uh, sector and then looking at opportunities to export goods here. Uh, we're also looking at uh, coking coal for the manufacturing of steel. Uh, manufactured or uh, mined by some of Canada's companies. So there are certain areas there as well. Uh, some Indian companies are active in Canada in the mining sector as well. Um, again, the breadth is fairly broad and uh, I think it's incumbent on us to uh, focus as far as we can and try to increase as much that activity as possible. The success of the Indo-Canadian community has been quite spectacular in Canada. Uh, they're not only prominent in business, academia, culture, uh, but also moving into parliament and the government. You yourself are an exemplar of that, of the success of the, I mean, the first high commissioner of Indian origin uh, to, to India. Can you give a sense, you know, this is also an important theme of the prime ministerial visit, mm -hmm. where he's expected to address, uh, have a massive outreach event to analyze the PIOs in Canada. Can you give a sense of what makes Indian community successful? and uh, also about the Prime Minister's outreach events mm -hmm, mm -hmm. connected with the diaspora. I, I think the uh, well, with 1.2 million Canadians of Indian origin, that's a little over 3% of our population. It's a very high on a per capita basis uh, diaspora, I think, of any country uh, around the world. So that's uh, a very significant to, to note. But more importantly, that is a reflection of what Canada is all about. So, you know, a multicultural society, 
Um, it's the fabric of Canada. And whether it's the Indo-Canadian community or other communities, they're very significant contributors, uh, not only to Canadian society, but to the Canada-India brand. So I look at the diaspora as ambassadors, Canada-India relations, just like I am, because there's an affinity to the relationship could be related to business, it could be related to education, it could be people to people or tourism. Um, all of these individuals are contributing something to that relationship, which is one of the reasons why I think it's great that Prime Minister Modi is, in fact, reaching out to the diaspora community because, again, uh, they can play a role in helping further advance the relationship. The, uh, the community will be welcoming Prime Minister Modi in large numbers. He'll be welcomed, no doubt, like a rock star in Toronto. And we're certainly looking forward to uh, a very lively, energetic event that will see uh, the strength of that diaspora community speak uh, loudly and uh, with a very warm welcome. The future of Indo-Canadianizations uh, and some of the key areas where we can see a marked up swing. Uh, can you just give a sense of that in the precise details? Sure. We, uh, first of all, this visit will be an opportunity to really build and boost some strong momentum in taking the relationship to even newer heights and greater heights. Um, and I think that'll show loud and clear when this visit is on and when it's over as well. And so a lot of what we will do will focus on building on the momentum of this, uh, this visit going forward. Uh, we will continue full steam ahead, our gas on the pedal for trade investment and try to bolster those numbers and greater expanded cooperation in these areas because this will create jobs in India, it will create jobs in Canada, and this will be very, very important. At the same time, however, we'll see ourselves ramping up some other areas of the relationship that we maybe haven't been focusing on as much as we have in the past, uh, as, as much as we, we would like to in the future. And that would include engaging uh, with all the states around uh, uh, India a little bit more directly, looking at opportunities in cities outside of the primary cities where we have offices to see what opportunities there are for companies and individuals to pursue. Uh, we'll also focus a lot more uh, on education, educational and academic linkages, people-to-people -people ties, culture including film and sport, some of these other areas. Make the relationship as well-rounded and as broad-based as possible is where we want to go in this.